I'm Courtney with Filament Stories, and I am here with someone I'm really excited to introduce you to. Now, you are Philip. Can you tell us who you are? Hi, I'm Philip from Make Good. We're a nonprofit in New Orleans that focuses on 3D printed ad adaptive technology. Now, there's been a lot of excitement recently. I'm gonna stand up about this right here behind me. This is a 3D printed chair. And if you notice, it's actually kind of small, and that's because it is for a child. Now, when I saw this, and the question that came to mind was, well, why would you need a 3D printed chair for a child? And there are a lot of reasons that a child might need one. But one thing that's really interesting is that children grow very fast. And so insurance doesn't want to pay for a wheelchair or an assistive technology chair like this because they're growing so fast. And make good, you guys have come in with a solution. Yeah, so we, there was a design that was came up with by Tom Global. It's a nonprofit based in Israel. We worked with them in an industrial design firm to evolve that design because it took wood, CNC, off the shelf wheels, sewing, and a lot of assembly that really is kind of difficult, even if you have like a university level maker space. So we wanted to develop something that could be completely 3D printed on a consumer level machine. Okay. So there's a lot of exciting stuff in here. One, this is a well thought out, extremely clever design, but I don't know if you might recognize some of this filament, my friends out here. This is Cookie Cad filament. So Cookie Cad worked with you all. And the other thing is, this is a 3MF that can be loaded in and it's set up to print on Bamboo Lab A1 printers, which you all decided to go with that because we were looking for something that was a not necessarily standard, but was accessible and popular. Yeah, exactly. We want to make it as easy as possible to get these to people that need them. So yeah, we chose that size because it's become a really common size for printers. So does that mean that I could maybe print a chair for someone that I know that might need one? Or are there, in addition to I can go and print it, there are other considerations to making sure that this is safe for someone? and is exactly what it should be. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So you, I mean, we ultimately do want to make these files available to everyone, uh, but we are, you know, making sure we have a well thought out process, making sure everything is safe. And we also want to work with the clinicians uh, of a child uh, so that their doctors and therapists, you know, work with us or the people that are printing to be sure that it's exactly what the child needs. Okay, this is so much more than I originally thought because, okay, if you have not been to the Make Good website, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll card it. It's so fun to see these children who do not have the ability to move around and then they get in, and they're, they're, they're slightly different variations, right? And then suddenly they can grab hold and they're moving and the smiles on their faces and the excitement, you're just, you're just like, wow, we want one of these for every child that needs one. And what I'm excited about is the 3D printed community. And I'm talking to you all out there because so many of you are gonna say, how can I help, right? And so I think this, you guys are just blown up out of nowhere, right? Uh, it seems like it. I guess I've heard a lot of people today say they saw it on TikTok. I'm not even on TikTok. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. So yeah, it was surprising. It's really very cool though. So something that, when I went to your website, and so we had a conversation on the phone, mm -hmm. right? And when we went on the website, I was looking and you had mentioned wood and CNC. So the prior version of this, this so you all have been doing this for how long? Uh, well, actually, I'm not sure how long that design has been around, but other, as a nonprofit, we've yeah. been doing this for a number of years and facilitating getting those chairs in the hands of families that need them. And we would typically partner with like local maker spaces or universities and do it, say, with a class you know, grad okay. students okay. to help assemble and build them. So that was, that's one of the reasons we want to make it more accessible because, you know, not everybody's going to have a makerspace with the capability to deal with all the wood and the other, yeah. uh, other materials and the skill mm -hmm. to assemble it all. Okay. So that, that makes sense because if we haven't heard about you all, but you've been doing this for a while, it's this exciting decision you all made to say, how can we make this? more 
accessible, I mean, use that word, it's very overloaded, accessible so that more people can participate and be involved. And by having the design entirely 3D printed, that can work, but you still have, I love the fact you said we need the clinician because they're gonna know the child's needs. We don't know the needs. I'm super excited. I wanna print three of them. I don't know the child's specific needs. Also, safety. What if my printer doesn't do the best job of printing this and we have some weakness in the filament? I didn't put enough infill because I wanted to print it fast. I use lightning infill, who knows? And so now it's not safe. So we're trying to mitigate that by, you know, we're gonna test things and then provide guidelines for people. Oh, so that makes it easier that I have printed some parts and then how to test them to make sure they meet the quality standards and the safety yeah, standards. Yeah, and make sure they fit together properly. Oh, fit together. And it's all it's assembled properly. And I mean, we've, we're working on ways to help with the assembly process, like marking different pieces so they oh. they can Oh, be, keyed? Yeah, well, like, not quite or... keyed. Some, not quite keyed, but it's like a, where there's a logo or a oh, yeah. shapes you match up. Okay, shapes so you match it. So that sort of idea. This design, the wheels, everything about this is 3D printed, including this lovely squishy seat. And and there is, what is there that's not 3D printed in this entire thing? The only things that aren't 3D printed are these two casters in the front. So the only things that are, that are not 3D printed are these casters, the, the one caster in the back, and then the wheel bearings and the, the bolts oh, that hold them on. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because those are, that's something where you can't really replicate the strength of metal in the way it needs to be done. Yeah, and you've got... And the yeah. durability of bearings and small wheels like that. It's something that just 3D printing technology is not quite there yet. And it's... 3D printing is wonderful, but it's not the hammer, right? It shouldn't do everything, so it has this place. So I know that you have other people that want to talk to you. This is really exciting. I want to say to folks, if you're as excited about this as I am and you want to know how you can help Hold tight. I think there's a lot of help needed because you have a wait list. Yeah, we have a wait list of these chairs. Wait list of the chairs. Yeah, as soon as we get it tested and where we're ready to release it, there's a lot of people waiting for them. And so there are, I think, also people that are interested in helping coordinate. So keep, we'll, we'll let you know here. There are other channels that are letting you know. Hold tight. And I think the last thing I want to say is this is only one thing that you do. Yeah, you have we do all many kinds of other things. designs down here. Yeah, we've done assistive writing devices. This is a phone holder that I designed, uses MagSafe. So you designed this because yeah. it works with your needs. Yes. And it works really well with the MagSafe. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't I put the magnet in this yeah. morning, so there's no glue on it. So uh, oh, the oh, magnet's oh. pulling out, but the ones that, you know, yeah. work, they have glue in them, but yeah. But, and it's, Philip is one of the designers. So you're designing things, you have an understanding. I love this one, this is an apple. And, uh, oops, hold on. So this is a little apple with a hole in it. Huh? This is a device that will give you a big thing to grasp, hold your pen in place, and you can just write, right? Yeah, and so that was an example of a design that we, that hadn't been revised in a number of years that came from Makers Making Change. So we redesigned it for newer printers, because the original design actually was printed in two pieces and assembled with screws. So now that the printers are as good as they are these days, we were able to print it in one one piece. One piece. And then we added a print pl printed screw to secure it, so it's hardware less. This is great, um, but you have many designs. Yeah, we have similar mechanisms over here, but they're various types of writing devices, and. That's what 3D printing, or what makes 3D printing so conducive to what we do, is the rapid prototyping aspects that, you know, you can come up with any idea and try it immediately, almost immediately. Because before 3D printing, you would need molds. Yeah. It's just the process of prototyping something is not feasible for most people. You know, you need a large company with the equipment to do it. So, you know, 3D printing enables designers that otherwise couldn't be designers. So I think there's so much excitement here. So this is a huge part because it's a big thing and it will really give a child, I mean, mobility where they don't have it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that things like having a tool that will help you 
brush your teeth if that's what you need or make it easier to write for your your way of writing yeah we actually have a there's a guitar pick holder that we made for someone that that had a stroke so you put so your thumb through that hole thumb, thumb, thumb put your fingers on top of it oh the fingers on top of it and then you would strap that to your wrist oh oh i see it and then you get and you strum so that is another thing and you all are this is one of the things as a not for not non-profit you're hoping to make more tools yeah and and so maybe if you have someone who has a need there'll be a tool here i don't know this is and like we this love when yeah. well well we also love when people reach out to us and come to us with some something some problem that they want us to solve that they can't figure out a solution to no matter i mean I've, like I said, I made a, a gimbal holder for myself. Um, we've made, say, like that guitar pick holder. And then we encourage people to take our designs and modify them, change them how they may suit you, try new things. And we make everything available for free because we don't want to make money on, on any of this. It's just we want to put the ideas out there so people can print them themselves for people they may know or, you know, design start to design things based on what we've come up with and change it. I'm just very, very excited. And if you are as excited as I am, like I said, hold tight. And thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for, yeah. for coming. Now, this is your first 3D printing. Yeah, this is our first time here. Yeah? Yeah, we're typically used to doing more healthcare-centric events. So this is our first time. And this is it's been a blast. Well, this is a very enthusiastic community. So hopefully, hopefully, you guys, I'm looking at you and gals. All right, we'll be back soon. Check you next time.